you've navigated all of these things in life to a space now where being expansive in the present moment nonstop has mm-hmm. become your way of life. Yeah. So how can you go from one space of, okay, this was my life and this is what happened to me, which is often instead of this is what happened with me. I, this was my path. It mm-hmm. led me. And that is the, it happened with me versus it happened to me. And that goes to the little T, big T. These are traumas. They're cutting, they're cutting, they're cutting to how do you get to, okay, this was something I used to get to a point where I could open myself up. These cuts were actually breaking me open so that I could feel where I'm at. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, the process, right? Yes. You know, I would say information doesn't equal transformation. Oftentimes, the nature of content of a lot of really powerful books along my own path at the level of the mind or the intellect was something beautiful. It like took me into a nature of dreaming about what could be. But it sort of fell short in terms of the integration of transformation. I think that's what you're speaking to with reference to the nature of like, as you move into expansion, there's sort of this familiarity with contraction because in all essence, the whole reason that we have that is for survival. So I would say evolution and self-realization or spirituality is sort of looking back at each other, right? And sort of they're mirroring each other. And so what you're speaking to in terms of the nature of familiarity is familiarity breeds safety. Right. So that's why marketers spend billions of dollars on the nature of exposure. Is that if you've seen it enough and you've survived, it must be safe. Yes. It doesn't mean that it's safe. It's meaning that at the layer of the mind, it's safe because you survive. So this just goes back to the nature of why we constantly go back into unhealthy patterns. It's because we've survived in those unhealthy patterns, meaning they kept us safe at the layer of the mind. Right. So be able to drop below that is where the process of transformation takes place. And understanding the distinction is where all the healing is. And so most of us are in the familiarity and intimacy of the mind. And we think it's the same as the nature of like the somatic or the body and the heart. And you don't know what you don't know. Right. So most people are still trying to, uh, achieve or experience the nature of healing at the layer of the mind. And this was my path as well. So the intimacy with the layer of the mind is, is pretty strong uh, just because of my early trauma where it was so significant and so profound that the only safety was left in the mind. And so I tried to construct, as, as most people do, as they move to the layer of what they think could be safe and try to figure it all out, which is like this hyper-intellectualization of the nature of reality. So if I just figure out reality at the nature of the mind, then of course uh, I'll be safe, right? Like I'll figure it all out. But the ultimate truth doesn't lie at the layer of the mind. In fact, uh, the layer of the mind can't actually know truth. And that's what I actually fully understood as I went to the edge of the mind is that there was a limitation in it. And to know something in terms of everything that it's not is you can sort of start to know the opposite side. And so my journey very much went through deep depths of suffering because the old saying is like, the more you know, the more you suffer, right? And some people will say, oh, ignorance is bliss. And I'll say that until the freight train hits you in the face, right? Yes. So ultimately, you know, ignorance is more of a reflection of the nature of like how much of our subconscious hasn't been brought to consciousness, meaning brought to the light. And so we can choose to take our light and shine it within ourselves. And through that, that can help us reveal the nature of the unconscious patterns of suffering that we have that's sort of like the very first steps of the awakening process right it's sort of you wake up to these truths and then you clean up meaning you sort of like 
are aware now of what needs to be changed, and then you grow up. And this sort of happens in perpetuity. And so to bridge that gap, like what are the processes that one has to like go through in order to sort of like reduce the patterns of engaging with the contractions is there's many different tools that people can utilize as a means of uh, eliciting this sort of expansive nature. And a lot of it is more in the doing than it is in the learning. And so it's actually an unlearning. (laughs) And so that. that is where I think a lot get hung up and I would say suffer a lot. Um, and I would certainly say that for myself, that was part of the experience as well. It was like, you know, I knew uh, almost too much. And part of why when people ask me about these topics today, and I can articulate them very well, is simply because of the nature of like understanding the roadmap in intricate detail before ever the transformative process occurred. You know, um, and so there's uh there's both a value <laughs> and uh all forms of contraction have value meaning walking through fear and shame and guilt is where all wisdom comes from like it doesn't come from the light